If Islam teaches it or doesn't teach it, it's known. We can ask any of our scholars, it'll be the same. So we have both. Truth, proof. We have the evidence. But sometimes questions have a problem in the question because the question is the statement with a question mark. Let me give you an example. Somebody asks you, can you answer this question, yes or no? Answer. Only two choices you have is say yes or no. It's about your mother. Is she out of jail yet? My mother's never been... Ah! That was a yes or no question. But my mother's never been... Ah! Is your mother out of jail yet? Yes or no? Yes. Good, I'm glad she got out. So it doesn't matter what you said, you're stacked up because of the way the question is, yeah? So in this case, we have to straighten the question out. Oh, and there's one more little thing. And that is, while I'm giving you the answer, if you hear something that you like, you see the sense of it, the common sense, and you find that what you thought was actually upside down, are you going to be ready to reconsider your position and start to worship your God and my God without partners? Because, by the way, that's all Islam is really about. Worshiping God. That's what Islam is about. You ready for the answer? He's going to be going... Huh? How did I get into this deal? Because you are telling him exactly what he needs to know. Islam is about worshiping God on his terms. Let's check that out. You ask me now about four wives and one husband, yeah? Well, according to Islam, there is something called no sex except in marriage. Now, the Catholic Church kind of goes to an extreme. For the most holy and righteous of all the men, or all the women, they have no sex, period, ever. Because they can't get married, can't have children, never going to have any grandchildren. Nuns, priests, bishops, cardinals, even a pope, Never, ever, ever get married and never have sex. Well, at least they're not supposed to. <laughs> that was the whole idea, wasn't it? But Islam is not saying that. It's just saying no sex that's not sanctioned by Allah, meaning you have to get married, meaning you have to have a contract, a written contract with the lady so that she has something to get her rights with. Because when Islam came, women weren't getting their rights. But now, women get their rights. Women, and you can begin to explain how it is that in Islam, women have the right to own property. Women have the right to vote. It's 1,400 years. They didn't have to go through women's suffrage like we had in our country. Women have the right to be women. They don't have to be men to try to get money so they can have the things they want. They can just be women and stay home, do things at home, and still get money comes to them. How? Because it's the man's responsibility to take care of them, to bring them food, to bring them clothes, to uh, help them with education about Islam especially. All the things Islam is providing, these people don't even know about this subject. And a woman who has even any kind of property at all, whether she's very rich or not so rich, never has to give a dime to support the household. If a man is a street cleaner, making minimum wage, but he's married to a lady who's worth a half a million dollars, she doesn't have to give him a quarter. He still pays for the house. He still pays for the utilities. He still pays for the car. It's his responsibility. You can't marry a woman for her money in Islam. But a woman can marry a man for his money easy. Because Islam has the ideal thing that every woman's looking for. It's called what's mine's mine and what's his is mine too. <laughs> It's not a joke, it's, it's a truth. 
By now, the guy's going, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. See? Now watch it turn. Watch it turn. And this is just one example. So a woman has so many rights in Islam that she is considered the queen of the house. And that's a very big royal status in Islam for a woman to be a Muslim woman and queen of her house. Something nice. Respect, honor, dignity. And a man in Islam cannot cheat on his wife. The punishment for it is you don't want to know. You don't even think about it. That's why you see brothers. Again, this is something you take for granted. But I'm trying to tell you that I know both sides. And if you see it, the difference between the young brothers for the Muslims and these other youngsters out here in college, jobs and so on, or without jobs, and a girl goes by, Muslim sees a girl go by, and the other boy sees a girl go by, and both of them do this. Okay? The, boy, the Muslim not supposed to, but he's going like this, and the boy is going like this. Both of them did the same thing. But what's the difference is what one of them is saying. One of them is saying, Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah. Look, it's fitna, man, it's fitna. Yes or no? <laughs> the other one's going, Ha ha, mama. <laughs> yes or no? Even here in Australia, the brothers still have Islam. They still know this is wrong. This is not the right way to be. We don't like it. I want to get married. That's the answer, isn't it? That's not what those other guys are saying. They're looking for instant solution to their problem. And Muslims don't do that. Muslims are looking to get married. And Prophet Sassam told us, get the children married as soon as they're old enough. Don't wait till they're 21, because then they're fully grown. That's not Islam. It's not what the Prophet Sassam That's not Islam. It's not what the Prophet Sassam taught us. Is it? Okay. You got to be honest. That's what this lecture is about, by the way. Along with that, getting married when you get married there's a whole lot about giving rights to the lady is that right she has a wakil or a wali who is responsible for her and he's taking care to be sure she gets a fair deal and whatever is oh and here's another thing dowry for Christians has always been girls pay the boys how many of you knew that the dowry goes the other way. And, uh, and for 2,000 years, now just in the last couple decades, the women are going, hey, I don't, why should I have to give any money? <coughs> but it's always been in Islam, the men have to take care of the women. Right? Always. So when you get married, you give her. And she gets to tell you what it's going to be or you can make an offer and if she doesn't like it, she'll say, no, we need more than that. That's not right. If he can say, well, you know, the Prophet ﷺ mentioned to one of the Sahabi just to teach her one ayah from the Quran. He said, yeah, because he didn't have anything else, okay? Go back out there in your BMW and do it, dig around a little bit, you know? Because that ain't going to work. She has the right. Because that's what Islam is about, about rights. About now, the person you're talking about, he's going, whoa, uh, he wishes he didn't get into this. You're telling him things he never heard of before. But check this out. In Islam, the man is the one who is having the heavy burden when it comes to support. The woman doesn't support anything. And it's set up in Islam that the women have extra protection so that they don't wind up out in the streets with nothing. They don't wind up as old bag ladies. They don't wind up as prostitutes. They don't wind up with a child with no father. 
Islam is providing for him in the best way. Even if you're in a society with 20 women, 20 women out here, and only six or seven men, no problem. It's not a problem. Because each of those men can take on the responsibility of up to four. Yeah? Now if you got seven men, 20 women, still got one opening. Yeah? No more than that. It's four. So it's not a problem. Not only that though, and this is usually where I cap it with them. I ask them, have you ever considered if you have a hundred women on this side and a hundred men on that side? As soon as you marry this man to this woman, here we got a match, how many are left? 99 on both sides. So let's start getting them married till we get down to the very end and we find all of a sudden there's five men left and five women left. Now what's the choice? Man can only choose from the five. Right? Right? Because in Islam, the woman cannot have more than one husband. Well, one of the reasons, by the way, is because a child born wouldn't know who the father was. And when it comes time for inheritance, how would you know how to distribute it? That's one of the rights of the child. But to come back to this, the man over here can only choose from the unmarried women, true? But the women, who do they get to choose from? Every single man there is still eligible to her. Because they don't have four wives yet. <coughs> Who's got the most choice? See, you never thought of that. Never hit you. That Allah, see, because we're not Allah, we can't think like God. But Allah knows what he created. And there's always more women on this earth than there are men. Today, it's more than four to one. But that's not the point of having the discussion. I'm just saying, who has the most choice? The woman. Because the man is stuck. He's only got five women to choose from, or three women. Or what if there's only one woman left? That's it. That's your wife. That's it. And I don't care if she's really healthy, you know. That's it. But for the ladies, they can choose from any other men as long as he doesn't have four wives. Now, what's another advantage of that is a man gets around. We're social. We know each other. We know who's where, where going on, blah, blah, blah. But the women don't. There are a lot of times they don't know what's up. And they might think, oh, this guy, he's real nice. But then they find out, oh, he's stingy. He slaps his wife around. He does, you know, thing. I don't like that. I wish I would know that beforehand. Well, how would you know? Well, it's real easy. Because if she's already, if she has a friend that's already married to the guy, she'd know. Word gets out real fast. Who's the nice guy, really? And who's the one praying and going to the masjid and praying charity? And so this is one of the ways that she is being benefited by this. So who's got the most choice? And who's got the most benefit? And by now the guy's going, I didn't know that, I didn't know that. It happened, actually, it happened. A woman had asked me the same way. And when we got to the end of the thing, Why? Because it becomes clear that this is not from a human being. No human could have figured all of this out. And nothing in Islam said you had to marry four women. <laughs> The Sahabi, the companions of Muhammad Sallallahu when the order came, it didn't say marry four women. It said marry other women because it was talking about not taking the orphan girls and marry them to get their money away from them. That's what it's talking about, the verse before it. Marry other women of your choice, Ithna, two, Salat, three, Arwar, four. If you can treat them with equality, and that's what makes it so great, because if I have one wife and I give her this and this and this, I have to give the other wife the same thing. I cannot mistreat her and put her lower than this one. They have to have the same status, social status, material status. You have to provide for them. And if you stay a night with this one, you have to stay a night with that one. This is the deal. 
your time, your money, your 